Hi guys, here I'm going to show you five awesome ways to save a ton of time when working with huge worksheets in Excel. That includes viewing, managing, moving around them. It's going to make life a lot easier. And this tutorial is different than the best view for working with a large spreadsheet tutorial. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. So what I've got here is a very huge set of sample data that, let's say it's projections, some sort of financial projections, spans over a couple of years. So we have 12 months over here. And then we have a little summary column for year one. And we go over to year two. In reality, it would probably be three or five years. And a bunch of expenses and then a little total row. And we have this, let's say, for a facility, and then four times. So it's a real pain to view this. It's a real pain to work with it. There's just a ton of data. So let's get in with the first thing that you can do. This is amazing. I love it. It's called freezing panes. So you go to the View tab, and right here you have Freeze Panes. And what this is going to allow you to do is to make it so that you see this row right here with all the months. When we scroll down, we will still be able to see them. And when we scroll to the right, we will still be able to see all of these guys. So we know exactly what this value applies to when we're all the way over here. I can say I know what month this is and what item. So freeze panes on the view tab, freeze top row. So if I click this, it's going to keep row one frozen. So when I go down, you can see that. Not very helpful in this example, but if all your column headers are in row one, you can use that one. And if we want to remove it, you click it again and you can click unfreeze panes. Now it's back to normal. In this case, if we do freeze first column, that actually will work quite nicely. So our first column is frozen. Now we can scroll to the right. And I can see all the way over here that 6932 applies to dumpster. All right, now let us unfreeze the panes. In this example, and I'm going to say maybe most often, you're going to want to freeze a row and a column at the same time. And that's quite easy to do. What you want to do is to select a cell that is just to the right and just below what you would like to freeze. So I want to freeze row 2 and column 1. So I will select the cell to the right of column one and the cell just beneath row two. Then go to freeze panes and hit freeze panes. Now, when I scroll down, I can see exactly what month it's for. Scroll to the right, exactly what line item. So we can very easily see 8782 is month 16 and it deals with depreciation. Now, before you tell me all these numbers are wacky, I just used the rand between function to generate them. So it's not going to add up to anything sensible, because obviously depreciation is most likely not going to change month to month like this from 8782 to 863. But that's how you freeze panes. It's a really, really, really awesome feature. It's on the View tab, Freeze Panes. And if you want to remove it, you just hit Unfreeze Panes and everything goes back to normal. So really the only thing to remember here is if you want to freeze a row and a column at the same time, select the cell directly to the right of the column to freeze and directly below the row to freeze. I'm going to leave this example like this. Really nice. So I love freeze panes. It's the first thing that I do when working with a very large worksheet like this. Now let's go to the very next thing. The very next thing is to group data. It's something you might not have heard about in Excel. A lot of people don't use it, it, but it's really, really, really awesome. So it's over here on the data tab, all the way over here under outline. What it allows us to do, it's really, really awesome. So I told you there are these summary columns, right? We have year one and over here year two. Wouldn't it be nice if I could see those right next to each other? So what we can do is to group the columns. We select all of these columns, month one to month 12. I go to the data tab and I click group. Now we get this little thing that appears up here and a little minus and a plus button. It's awesome, watch this. Click the minus, bam, it's gone. 
Your columns have been hidden. So they aren't gone. Nothing was deleted. Nothing was removed. Nothing was changed. It simply provides you a very user-friendly way for hiding and unhiding your columns. And this up here is really hard to miss. It doesn't scroll away. So you'll always see if your data has been grouped because it has a little plus. Click the plus, data comes back. Now it's not always going to be selected. So if I click over here, group the data. Now just ungroup it. So data is not selected, just hide and unhide very quickly and very easily. So we can go ahead and do it over here for month 13 to 24. Data tab, group, close these guys. And now I've got year one and year two right next to each other. Very easy to scroll down and look at all that data. And you may have noticed the one and the two that appeared up here. Although, there we go, the one and the two that appear up here, when you click them, what they do is they will expand all the groups, all the groupings, or collapse all of them all at once. So I always forget which is which, so obviously not one. <laughs> if I click two, they are expanded immediately. One collapsed. So once you have them grouped, you can go to another worksheet tab, go away, okay, come back here. Okay, I wanna see my years really quickly. Let's hit one, okay, there are my years, and it's really awesome. Now, when you're working with truly large spreadsheets, worksheets, truly large worksheets, this can go a little bit slow because Excel, um, well, Excel is Excel. So even on my very fast computer, this goes very slow when I'm working with massive spreadsheets, but it's still so, so, so helpful. Now, you can also do it with rows. So when I click workers and go down here, I just want to see the total rows. I just select them, data tab, group, and exactly the same thing happens. It's just for the rows instead of the columns. Click the minus sign and it's all gone. So that makes it very easy. Now I can see year one and year two totals. And we can continue to do that as much as we want. And we even have our own one and two over here. So we can group all of our data, expand it. It is really, really nice. Now to remove grouping, it's not that difficult, but you do want to pay attention. So if we go, let's expand these guys. And data tab, okay. So we have group and then we have ungroup. Ungroup removes the grouping. So note that if I select a single column and I just click ungroup, what it's going to do is it's going to create two separate groupings. So this one and this one with the column that I ungrouped in the middle. So it's not going to expand to select the current grouping and remove it. Also, you can nest groupings if you want. So if I were now to select these two and hit group, then they would be nested. <laughs> Now we have one, two, three. That gets complicated very quickly. I do not recommend nesting your groupings. So I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that. But back to removing the grouping. You want to select the entire grouping to remove it so that you don't accidentally get two separate groupings from the big one. So select this guy, ungroup. Okay. Select this guy over here and ungroup. And if you wanted to do it for the entire worksheet, just select everybody, go down, ungroup, ungroup. You can click the button. You don't have to click the drop down arrow. And then it's going to say, okay, do you want to ungroup rows or columns? Let's do rows. Okay, rows have been ungrouped. Now let's go ahead and ungroup the columns. Okay, ungroup our columns. Now all of our data is back to the way it was before. Now grouping is nice, but it can take a long time. So there's a really, really cool feature for grouping. It's called outline, auto outline. If your data is highly structured, it follows patterns that are clearly discernible. So for here, we have facility one. It's very, very simple. Then there's an empty row, then facility two, and so on. The data is all laid out the same. The headers are all the same, the columns, one, to 12 and then for year one we have a formula a sum formula that sums those so it's a very clear pattern that excel can understand what we can do is select the entire worksheet data tab group 
This time click the drop down arrow and hit auto outline. Now let's see what it grouped. We shall click one and one and look at that. Now we can very quickly and easily see year one and two totals for all facilities. And of course, if you want to expand one, just click the plus and we can see as much or as little of the data that we would like to see. So outlining just makes it a lot faster, but your data has to have discernible patterns. That's the only thing to make sure. And the one and two over here, I don't know what's going on with my Office 365, but they don't always appear. Sometimes I have to expand selection or collapse the selection for it to come back. But it's a great little feature of Excel. I love it. it. Saves me a lot of time when I want to summarize my data. And of course, you can remove grouping, like I just showed you how to select everything, go over here, ungroup, select rows and columns, and you're all good to go. Now, there is one thing that I want to mention. So grouping, it doesn't change your data. It doesn't do anything with your data. So you may go change a cell here. And then you want to look at your data. OK, OK. And then you realize, hey, no, I don't want to change that cell. So I'm going to undo changing that cell. Well, watch what happens when I hit Control Z now. It redoes all of my groupings, all of the expanding and collapsing I did by clicking the plus and the minus. So opening and closing these groupings is registered as an action that you can undo and redo. But that's about all there is for grouping. I'm going to go ahead and leave this dude collapsed, OK, just like this. So we use the outline feature. Nice, neat, awesome. Now let's go ahead and combine freezing and grouping. So on the next tab, freeze and group, I have got a lovely little thing. And I had a spreadsheet laid out just like this. And how it was was I had all the nice data for the facilities and the months and all that jazz. And then they put a bunch of stuff up here. Now, yes, it's nice to have it on the same worksheet, um, but it causes problems if you want to freeze and group your data, or at least if you want to freeze your data. One thing is, let's go ahead and freeze how we did on the first worksheet. So select the cell, view, freeze, freeze. OK, well, now we have, look at that. It's so annoying. I can't see all the data I want to see. It's in the way. It's a real pain. Of course, you can minimize the ribbon to give yourself a little bit more room, but it's still just a pain, and it's in the way. So once you've frozen the panes and you have this annoying little guy up here, just select all of the data. And now we can group that guy, close it. There we go. Nice, neat, easy to scroll through the data. Perfect. And at any moment, if we want to see what's above it, hit the plus sign over here, and we've got the data back. Perfect. But there is one issue. Okay, let's ungroup the rows, select those guys, ungroup. There we go. Now, if this section up here is bigger than your current viewing window, it's going to cause issues when we freeze panes. So I don't have that problem at the moment. Everything fits on all at once. But if I just scroll up, okay, let's unfreeze my panes. Forgot to do that. View, freeze panes, unfreeze. Okay, so if I scroll up here, and now I go to freeze my panes. I'm trying to scroll up now. OK, the new version of Excel gives me a little preview, but watch when I pull my fingers off the mouse pad or the trackpad. Bam, gone. So I cannot permanently scroll up. It gives me the preview, but I can't see the stuff the moment I take my fingers off the little touchpad on the laptop. So now it's gone. When I scroll down, it's just like that, frozen, nice, neat. But I can't see the data up there. So what you want to do, let us unfreeze. Let's say you've got a lot of data. We'll select the cell that's below the row you want to freeze, to the right of the column you want to freeze, and now pull it out. Zoom out as far as you need to zoom so that all the data will be on there at once. Doesn't matter how far you zoom. We've already selected the cell. We don't have to select anything else. Go to freeze panes, freeze panes. Now we can zoom back in. OK, 
Now we can select the data and we can go to data and group it. So now, of course, we can leave it there if we want or we can collapse it. So that last little tip, just zoom out so you fit it all on one screen, freeze the panes you want to freeze, then group the data that you want to get the hell out of the way. And that's how I've been using freezing and grouping combined lately. So I get all that data out of the way, see what I want. Life is good and happy. Now let's go for two more tips. So these three tips, how to freeze, how to group, and how to freeze and group together, it's what I use 95% of the time. But the next two are can be pretty helpful. They have their uses, let's say that. So we want to go to the split tab. So I want to look at the data all the way on the right and the left, and I, I kind of want to compare them, or I want to compare facilities up and down. So what I can do is go back to the View tab. It's a great tab, lots of very helpful productivity things here. And we want to go to the Window section and click Split. Now we've got this little sort of window pane guy that's opened up. I'm going to put my mouse cursor right in the middle of it. And I can move it around. And it allows me to view four different sections of the spreadsheet. So by default, let's center it a little better. OK, so when I scroll to the right over here with my mouse over here, we can see these guys move to the right, but the columns stay the same. If I scroll up and down, we can see these two sections move together. Rows stay the same. And it is the same down here. So that and that. And what this allows us to do is to view different parts of the spreadsheet at the same time. So over here, I could also scroll all the way to the left. But I've honestly never really found splitting it four ways like this to be so helpful. So one thing you can do that's pretty darn cool as far as splits concerned is go to the horizontal bar, click that, and drag it down, all the way down. Now let go. And now it's just split into two. So we have two sections. And of course, you could put your mouse over the middle again and adjust the size of each section. And if you want to remove this, you just go back to the View tab and click Split. And now we have one worksheet. If you want to get back to four again, just click the Split button once more, and it defaults to four. And we are all the way down here. OK. And if you want to click the vertical bar and move it all the way to the left, you can then remove that. So I'm still holding the left mouse click button right now, and I've dragged it all the way over here. I move it just to the rows and then release the button, and now we're gone. And I can adjust the horizontal and now view it in two separate windows like this. And for this data example, this is probably one of the more helpful views when I have it horizontally like this. I'm going to go ahead and remove the ribbon guy. OK, I just double clicked on one of the tabs and it collapsed it. Now let's say I want to view facility one right here. And then down here, I want to view facility four right next to it or right below it. OK, go down a little bit. All right, so now I can easily compare the data. I don't like the split view that much, but in some cases it can be helpful, so I feel obligated to tell you about it. It doesn't work between worksheets, so if I go to another worksheet, split will not be applied. It's only applied to that individual worksheet. And now let's move to the last example, the last trick. Okay, so I showed you a few different ways to change things so you get better views for everything. Now let us make it so it's automated. Because a lot of times, and at least in my case, I got uh, 10 or 15 spreadsheets all formatted exactly the same, structured exactly the same, I should say. So I could group all of the same columns and all of the same rows and do all that jazz very simply. So let's expand this guy again. And let's say that what I want to do is apply an outline and a freeze panes. So I want to do something relatively simple. Well, what we're going to do here, I'm not going to really go through a lot of VBA here, but I'm going to show you how to record the macro. So stay on the worksheet that you would like to do something with. Go down to the bottom left. You should see a little record macro button. 
or on the View tab, you can click the Macros button and hit Record Macro. Now, the moment you do that, you get a little window, pops up. I'm going to call it Better View. You can use a shortcut key. Let's say I want to do Control Q. Store macro in this workbook. Let's not worry about this for now. Hit OK. Now, the macro is recording. Anything I do is going to be recorded. So, first thing I want to do is to group the data. Let's say that I can't just click outline. I have to do this by hand. So I will select this data and make sure you know what you want to do before you hit record macro. Now I will go to data tab, group. Now let's say I also would like to collapse it. That will be recorded in the macro. Now let us go here, group, collapse that as well. And I believe I should have actually frozen the panes first, but I don't think it's going to mess up our macro too much, just some extra code. So let's expand these guys once more. Click here, go to the View tab, freeze the panes, freeze the panes. OK. Now I've got it frozen. And as long as I am not selecting another, another cell, navigating like this should not be recorded in the macro, so we don't have to worry. So I've frozen the panes. Now let's collapse everything again with one. OK. Nice. OK, now to stop recording, we can go to the View tab, hit Macros, and hit Stop Recording. Or we can go to the bottom left. It is now a little square. Click that to stop recording. And nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. But if we hit Alt F11, we can go to the VBA window. Look to the left pane. If you don't see it, go to View and click Project Explorer. Open up Modules, Module 1, and this is what it recorded. So this macro right here is what's going to do everything we just did. It's going to group the data, freeze the panes automatically for us. And it's a bit of a messy macro, but I'm not going to cover that here. Don't worry about it. It should hopefully work OK. Let us go back. So you can hit Alt F11 or click the little green Excel icon. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and remove everything. So let us unfreeze the panes. Let us select that and go to Data, Ungroup, uh, Columns. OK. All right. Oh, OK. <laughs> So that's another thing to notice I forgot to mention earlier. The columns have remained hidden even though I ungrouped them. Don't worry, your data has not been deleted. To fix this, just select the columns. OK. And then right click them. So you select to the right and left the hidden data. And then you go to unhide. All right, so now all of our data is back and we are very happy. OK, so let's run the macro now. Our keyboard shortcut was Control Q. So I'm over here. I'm doing stuff. OK, I get here. I hate the view. Let's hit Control Q. How awesome is that? Frozen panes? Yes. Yes. Data grouped and collapsed? Yes. That is so cool. And you could record another macro to remove all of this if you wanted, or as I've shown you before, you can go ahead and remove it however you want. All that did, all that did, it just automated what you did. It didn't do any weird stuff, didn't do anything bad with your data. But there is an important thing to note. When you use a macro to do this, instead of doing it in the worksheet yourself, you cannot undo what a macro has done. And the record macro feature records everything that you do. So if you go around deleting some data while you're recording the macro, and then you go to another worksheet and use the recorded macro, you're going to have a bad day. <laughs> but that's about it for this tutorial. That's five really great tips for saving a lot of time when you work with huge worksheets in Excel. So we've got freezing panes over here. 
Then we've got grouping data. We've got freezing and grouping data, splitting the view so you can see the same worksheet in different places at the same time, and recording and using a macro to do all of this instantly. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.